Hi everyone and welcome to the first episode of The Final Whistle where we'll be discussing the SWPL fixtures from the weekend and getting the expert opinion from our uh, players and former players. We have Rachel Walkage from Livingston with us today. Hi Rachel. Hiya. And um, we have Dion Brown of Kamarnock. And Lauren Campbell, the Aberdeen legend. You can see that in the background there as well. She's going to be giving her input. How are you, Lauren? Good, thank you. So top of the bill uh, at the weekend there was the Celtic versus Rangers game. Probably going against the form and that Celtic haven't dropped any points this season. Winning 10 out of 10 and also taking the lead in the game. But then Rangers showing that grit and determination to come from behind and, and uh, seal the victory. Yeah, I think it just shows how... How good the Rangers side are to come for the one nothing down and bring it back to the to two one, but yeah, it was a, a massive victory for them to, to go in front of Celtic. Yeah, Lauren, uh, I think uh, when it shows you the the depth that Rangers now have as well, Celtic have that uh, too, obviously, but particularly at the top end of the pitch. Um, and Kirsten McLean is absolutely flying just now, both at national and club level. Uh, and she had an impact uh, on the game heavily with with her goal and just her general play. Yeah, it was one game. I watched uh, the whole game at the weekend. So, yeah, before the game, I might have even tipped Celtic, to be honest. But I thought Rangers, for the majority of the game, they were dominant and they really controlled the ball. I thought the second half as well, they almost camped Celtic in their second half. As soon as Celtic scored, it was like, right, game on, let's get back in this. So, yeah, I think, like you say, squad depth, they've now got Brogan Hay back and they've got Lizzie Arnott back. So they play that 3-5-2 formation and now they can change the wingers out. Like, that's brilliant. So that's a hard shift. The playing out wing, wing back, I've done that myself. So, But yeah, I thought um, I thought Rachel McLaughlin had a very good game, to be fair to her. But yeah, I think Kirsty McLean really stood out and a, a great talent, 18-year-olds and you're running, running an old firm game. Uh, so I think she's got a big feature. So they go into an international break now and I think there's a few injuries in that area for, for the Scotland squad as well, so hopefully she gets her chance this weekend. Yeah, I think uh, Lizzie Arnott was, like you've seen her assist for, for Rio Hardy's goal. Um, it's just, it's almost like having a new player, just obviously over, overcoming their injuries, and she was, uh, had her injuries last season too, and it probably did have an impact, and it forced Rangers to strengthen in those areas, but uh, Rachel, the way they can switch them, switch the, the wingers, and especially in the, in the attacking third, you've got Kirsty Howitt and Rio Hardy scoring goals for fun at the moment. Um, Rangers really are a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, totally. Just to echo what Lauren said as well. I think the confidence and the quality that was in the middle of Rangers centre midfield shone through massively yesterday. Celtic in the first half, I think, moved the ball well. They're fluent when they move the ball about on a weekly basis. They play really nice football. However, I think Rangers just had that extra bit of grit in the middle of the park yesterday. And as you said, standout player Kirsty McLean, for somebody her age, she's got so much experience and it shines through every single week. And as you say, um, it's well deserved that she's in the Scotland set up for the, like, the full national team at the moment. Um, and obviously with injuries to Caroline Weir um, and Erin Cuthbert sort of in and out of things at the moment, she's, she's sort of hit peak form at the right time, I would say. Yeah, uh, absolutely. As you said, the the injuries that we that we do have, but um, in the other episodes that was speaking with Suzanne Winters about that and just showing the the depth the national team has at the moment, but not just that, but uh, Scotland based players as well. When it was maybe heavily weighted towards players that were playing abroad or playing down south, but it's just it's good to see such a strong contingent of uh, homegrown players and home base players that are currently in the squad. But we're going to move on now to Hearts versus Motherwell. Uh, Hearts are, seem to be going from strength to strength at the moment, Rachel. Maybe a slower start to the season, uh, but they seem to be picking up form and they've had really good performances last week coming from behind late on against Spartans and then a really convincing 5-1 victory uh, over Motherwell. Yeah, I think the result last week probably pushed them on to the result that they got yesterday. Um as Eve had said in, in the commentary, she said that they were more clinical in front of goal. I think adding the likes of like Katie Lockwood, um, Danny Finlay um, back into the mix here, adding that experience, I think this season you've seen them shine more and more on a weekly basis and getting those goals that maybe last season, the season before they didn't get. Um, but no, I think definitely think they're a force to be reckoned with this season. As you see, it's been quite a slow start for them, but 
I think the international gate breaks maybe came just a week or so early for them. I think they would have prepared to push that back a couple of weeks and, you know, get another couple of results under their belt. But they seem to be making really good progress this year. Um, by adding players from pretty much around the country uh, into the mix. And I think that they've got a really good squad culture just now. So, yeah, it was a really good result for them. Um, unfortunate for Motherwell. Um, they obviously sneaked a, uh, sneaked a result last week, which I think would maybe have pushed them on slightly this week. Um, however, yeah, I just don't know what's going on with them at the moment. They seem to be one week really sturdy and then the next week, not so much. So, yeah, I think they're in a bit of a tricky position at the moment. So the breaks probably came at a really good time for them to, you know, regroup and rebuild and, and come back even stronger. Yeah, I think with Hearts going full time, it's you're now starting to see the work that's going on, obviously during training, during the week, Lauren, that it's now transferring onto onto the park on a Sunday. That's them now up to up to fourth in the league, a uh, position that they'll at least they would imagine themselves to be in. They want to get closer to to the big three at the top, but that is going to take time. But I think the the evidence is there that the process is working. Yeah, I think um, Hearts are like a very good back team um, from their club. Quite impressed by how much like money um, the club's poured into them, to be honest. It's, and it's such a quick succession as well. Like Hibs a couple of seasons ago were above them, and I think that's starting to turn um, quite consistently as well. So, like you say, fourth is probably um, like... The, the ambition of the club, but if they could be, be right into the top three, I think they would be delighted. But I think they're a wee bit off that, if I'm being honest, but they'll be comfortable in fourth, would be my guess. But yeah, picking players up from around the world now as well, so it's it's crazy to see people pulling squads in like that. So, But yeah, I think I watched the, the game as well. I thought Katie Lockwood was an absolute standout for them, dropping in, going in behind. I think just Motherwell didn't know. There was no consistent way they attacked. It was very fluid and they mixed it up parts. So I think Motherwell really struggled with their back three, which like Rachel says, Motherwell's so hard to predict at the moment. They I thought they were they were flying at the end of last season. I thought they'd really kick on, but I've seen them play Aberdeen and I've seen them play Montrose this season and they do have a lot of players injured. So maybe hopefully for Motherwell. Like another international break might do them some good. Um but they're still they're not in a bad position in the league. I think a lot of people have say Aberdeen um, have had a really good start and Motherwell have had a really bad start and they're on equal points. So, yeah, still a long way to go for Motherwell to, to pull in some good performances. Yeah, Dion, just like what the, the girls were saying there, um, not so much a bad start from Motherwell, but it's just probably the inconsistency that will be a bit frustrating for Paul Brownlee when they're, they're going in, they're, they're winning games one week and then losing heavily the next. It's probably... Yeah, the- that's... So we move on to the third game that did take place at the weekend. It was Hibs against the Ackies. And Hibs showing that uh, fight and bounce back as well because they lost 7-0 at Ibrox the week before and then they're going out and they're winning 8-1 uh, over Hamilton at the weekend. So it just goes, shows the swing that's within the league um, across the different clubs. But it'll be a welcome return to form for Hibs ahead of the international break. Yeah, I think Grant will be pleased going into the inter- international break with such a convincing win. I think they've had a bit of a rocky start to the season. Um, They've had some heavy defeats, which is unlike them, but it was nice to see Ailey Adams get a hat-trick yesterday. Um, She's been in and out of the squad over the start of the season, Um, so really nice to see her get on the score sheet yesterday. But also nice to see Mickey Macaloney back in the squad. She's not been playing regularly. Um, She's been out injured for a period of time, so they seem to get, once they get their bodies back from injury, um, I think they'll be a bit more consistent week in, week out, whereas unfortunately they just seem to have that really bad run of luck constantly over the last couple of seasons where they've got injury after injury to key players throughout the centre of their park especially um, so I think it's been really difficult for them, so I think they'll take quite a lot from yesterday um, and hopefully that'll help them after the international break um, but unfortunately for Hamilton I think it's a case of when you're down, you're down and I think sometimes it's really hard to get out of that rut of, you know, trying to keep picking yourself up week in, week out. And, you know, hopefully they break, get their break possibly against your likes of Montrose, potentially Dundee United. Um, it just depends. But I hope their luck does change for them. It's it's hard going. I've been there times before when you're getting beat week in, week out and 
you know, it's quite demoralising. So hopefully they can stick together as a squad and, you know, try and get a positive result in the coming weeks after the international break. Yeah, Lauren, I'll come to you on this one. Uh, just talking about Hibs and if I've noticed that an upturn in performance taking the Rangers game out since Siobhan Hunter came back from an injury. She's been out for a, a long time and she's such an important player for Hibs and I don't think it's any accident that you've seen an upturn, particularly in the defensive performances um, when she's returned to the squad and her leadership that she has. Yeah, definitely had a had a few battles with Shiv over the years on the pitch. But yeah, I love the way she plays football. Aggressive, normally scores headers and just leads by example. So I was quite glad to see her get the armband at the weekend. That was quite nice. Um, but yeah, I agree with Rachel. I think, unfortunately, Hibs, you can say they started poor, but I think they started the season with loads of injuries and they're only just coming, coming all fit now, which, um, yeah, hopefully kicks their season on. But They've got some great leaders um, in there. They've still got Joel and you've got like Leah, Le- Eddie, and Oatley. They've got a good solid squad of the young ones round about. And I think at the weekend there, that's the first time they've managed to sort of rotate their squad because you've got Baucom on the bench coming on scoring. And I know like Maya Christie, who moved from Aberdeen, she was on the bench, but's had most game time. So it's good that I think, like you say, the top three have really, really big squads um, that they rotate. And that's how they're so good every week. So hopefully Hibs get their injuries back in. They kick on and give Hearts a challenge for fourth. And Dion, I'll, I'll come to you. One of your former clubs, Aki's, um, not where they want to be, obviously, this season. Uh, change of management. Obviously, Gary Dotter was there for a long time. Bobby Watson's came in. Uh, he's had to do a, quite a bit of rebuilding there. Yeah. There's a lot of young players. They do play good football at times. You do see that, but it just seems to be maybe lapses in concentration and finding the goals. They're relying heavily on Josie to to get the goals for them. Uh, but yeah. where, do you, where do you think they can still improve and take positives from? I think it is. It's just obviously the like Rachel touched on. It's trying to bounce back for getting getting beat every weekend. It's hard, and I think maybe like you said, it's they're just maybe lacking that bit a wee bit of experience. There is quite a long, uh, quite a young side <clears throat> at Aki's, but um, yeah, hopefully they do kick on and, and try and stay positive and hopefully pick up a few points like from the likes of the, the teams that are lower down the league. Well, there was obviously three games that were cancelled because of the weather, but each of the teams, for one reason or another, will probably be disappointed that the games didn't go ahead. The first fixture I was looking at was Aberdeen and Partick. Partick have been, for me, probably one of the teams of the season up until this point, just with the probably the budget that they have in comparison to the teams that they're, that they're currently fighting with. They're fighting out with Hearts and Hibs, who are, who are full-time. Um, spoke to a few of the, the Partick girls, and they've been saying team spirit's been massive, and you, you can see that, and they are fighting for one another, and they're uh, probably not in a disrespectful way, but they are punching above their weight at the moment. It's, it'll be interesting to see how they how they continue that throughout the season um, and being able to compete at that level. But then also Aberdeen getting a... It was still a defeat, but 3-2 uh, at home at home to City. They, they're taking a lot out of that and looking forward to, to that match. And as I say, both teams have probably been looking at as potential three points, Lauren. Yeah, definitely. A bit disappointed that that was called off. It was actually a perfect day here in Aberdeen. You just couldn't get to us because all the road closure. So it was a bit of a shame as well, but... Yeah, I agree what you say. I think everyone says part and punch above their weight, and I get that in in for players and maybe for budget, but I just like the way they play football. They're like, we would call them up north, they're like a gang. Like, they stick together, they fight for each other, they take cards at the right time. Like, I would like to have played in a team like that, I think, because I'm a bit dirty myself. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was interesting, like you say, Aberdeen had... Um, a good performance against Glasgow City and maybe after the back of Champions League it was a good time to play them but I think they'd have had confidence to take into the part of the game and yeah I was wanting to go to that because it's always close contested but there's normally lots of goals in Aberdeen part of Um so yeah a bit disappointing uh, that's called off but it's maybe slight advantage Aberdeen that's got to be played midweek <laughs> maybe part of you have to come up the road on a Wednesday night and think uh, you forget how far away Aberdeen is so Fingers crossed for like a Wednesday big picture for that. <laughs> I'm so, sure particle absolutely love that. <laughs> <laughs> so the next game that was called off because of the weather was Glasgow City against Montrose, a game 
undoubtedly City would have been going into expecting to pick up the points. But from the other side of it, these are the games that Ventrones want to play, and that's why they worked so hard last year to get into the top flight and they want to test themselves against the best players in the country. So again, I, again, that both teams have been disappointed not going ahead. Yeah, I think Glasgow City would have wanted to get back and, and get a game under their belt after what happened midweek in the Champions League. They're the sort of team that as soon as they face any sort of hardship or a loss in any game, which happens very rarely, they want to get back on the pitch as soon as they can and, and show the Glasgow City that we all know um, we can make out in our league. So, uh, yeah, I think they'll be quite disappointed not to get back on the pitch. However, as you say for Montrose, I think they're taking everything in their stride this year. Uh, you've seen it the year previously with like Dundee United and things coming up. I think when you're fresh into the league, you're you're excited to play everybody. I don't think you're bothered about necessarily the results against, you know, like Glasgow City, Celtic, Rangers, Hearts, your your teams that are affiliated with a bigger club. I don't think you're necessarily as bothered about your results, but I think it's for them it's just about putting on a performance and just enjoying the experience because you don't really know if you're going to be in that league year on year or if you're going to be, unfortunately, one of the teams that's fluctuating up and down to SWPL too. So, yeah, I can see it for both sides. I think whenever that game takes place, I think it'll be an exciting one and hopefully Montrose get to show the best account of themselves. And then the final game that was called off the on Spartans against Dundee United, pretty much the same as uh, Partick Thistle against um, Aberdeen, that the, both teams that went into that looking to pick up three points, they would have both felt that they could beat one another. Uh, and it, they're sitting very close in the league as well, so they would have liked to have played that game and potentially picked up three points before the international break. Yeah, Spart- obviously Spartans would have been at home too, and they always play well at home, eh, Spartans. Me personally, I think that game we could have finished a, a draw. Like you say, they're, they're that close together, but yeah, it's just unfortunate the game was cancelled for them. So we move on to SWPL two now, and there's only one place to start. Having two players from the panel who are who were part of the squads. So Dion uh, Kelly picking up a four two victory over Livingston at the weekend down at Rugby Park. How was it from from your perspective when you were playing? Yeah, it was a good. So we move on to SWPL two now, and there's only one place to start. Having two players from the panel who are who were part of the squads. So Dion uh, Kelly picking up a four two victory over Livingston at the weekend down at Rugby Park. How was it from from your perspective when you were playing? Yeah, it was a good game. Obviously, Livingston came out and got the first goal. I think it was just up to us to get the head down and bring back the goals, and we won. Getting our two goals was fantastic. Um, but yeah, we just had to lift ahead and get the three points, and that's that's what we done yesterday. Rachel, how's the feeling in the Livingston camp? They can't be too disappointed as the way the seasons went so far, just coming up and sitting sitting in third position. Uh, but that's the second loss to to Kelly this season, and they're going to have to try and close that gap if they want to push on for at least a playoff position. Yeah, I think. We probably exceeded the expectation of where we thought we would be already. I think a lot of us would have taken probably sitting about mid table, um, just sitting there quite comfortably. But I think the start that we've had to the season has actually been really positive. We've got some results that I think people didn't expect us to get. However, the first game against Kilmarnock and in the game obviously yesterday, I think it's it still shows some inconsistencies that we've got as part of our squad. Um, we've got a lot of new players from the, the team that's been there since the beginning, so about three, four years ago. Um, so there is still those elements of people need to gel and bond together and know how each other plays. So probably just from my side of things, just trying to eradicate some of those silly mistakes that we're making, which if you'd played alongside each other, maybe for a little bit longer, you would know the runs that certain people make or like the passes that people prefer and things. But we're still very early on in the season. So, yeah. Unfortunate yesterday, but I think everybody's still very positive. And as a squad, we are quite positive. We just take every week as it comes. So 
yeah, unfortunate, but well done, Dion. I heard you played quite well, so well Thank done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, I'll come to someone impartial now, uh, so you can <laughs> see what you really think. But uh, obviously, when Aberdeen came back up through the through the leagues, uh, you were you were there as part of that, and it's uh, maybe not fair to say it's underestimated, but it's such a competitive league, um, the SWPL two and what both teams are, are doing at the moment. Uh, Kilmarnock have got a rebuild project that is on the go and they've got so many young players that they've brought in. burnsy has been unbelievable um, getting our national call up as well. But then Livingston coming up this season and pushing themselves uh, right up the league. It's it's great to see that competitiveness. Yeah, I think uh, when I played in SPL2, it's actually probably one of my favourites uh, for Aberdeen, although we were down the league. It's so competitive Um most people, most teams can beat each other each week. It's always good competition. Um, like I say, I think Livingston, you're a wee bit doing what Aberdeen did. We came up and went all the way through that league, but it was because we got momentum and because we got confidence. And a bit similar with Kilmarnock, like we had a really young team. So it was good for us to be in that SPL too for a year. It gave us confidence, gave us shape, let us build, play our style of football. So I think both of is, I think, go at it because I think there's always a there's one goes up and then there's a playoff you're never that far from from SPL 1 and I think both clubs have really good backing so if any is our are to make the jump I think both clubs like stand with quite a good structure behind them to to go on like Montrose this season and give it a good go so uh, I'll see where he's are yeah but there's another half of the league are still back <laughs> Um, so obviously leading from the front in the SWPL2 is Queen's Park who who are flying or sitting sit top of the league uh, another another strong win for them at the, at the weekend uh, 4-0 over Dark who have who have really struggled um, Dion will come to you one of your ex-teammates Ellie Kane is absolutely flying, <laughs> Six, right, she's 16, flying. 16 goals in 8 matches couple of hat-tricks in there um, having seen Ellie play at a couple of different clubs. It seems like she's really found a home now and maybe having the captaincy, giving her that responsibility, yeah. she's really, really living up to that. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, she's getting, the, she's got the confidence early and she's an absolute baller. Um, obviously, she's in the same league as us, but <laughs> hopefully she doesn't play as well against us in um, the next game. But yeah, she's she's absolutely flying. Um, she's getting the balls put in, the, the, the players that she's playing beside also. So she's, she's finishing well. And obviously, They've got a, a strong side, Queen's Park. And like you say, she's got the captaincy that's given given her that wee bit extra confidence and she'll probably keep banging them in. Yeah, Lauren, uh, they've really strengthened well. They're, if you look through their, their squad list, there's so much SWPL one experience in there. Um that she can probably kind of shows the, the good structure that's going on at Queen's Park behind the scenes to get these players to to come along because there was some of them that would have had other offers at SWPL one clubs. But uh, it seems to all be really gelling well at Queen's Park and that's the only way to, to show that is sit, when they're sitting in the league and winning convincingly every week as well. Yeah, definitely. I think it's like club on the up. I think I played them a couple of years ago in SPL2 and they were a very young team. The management was changed. It was a wee bit disjointed. So like you say, I think um, signing experience is actually quite key in SWPL2 because like I say it is competitive and it's quite a mentality monster kind of kind of league you've got to be up for every game each week so but yeah all I see on Twitter is Ella Kane, Ella Kane, Ella Kane. it's just banging <laughs> every week <laughs> you are probably no better than me but I think yeah when you've got a player like that as well just keep feeding her the ball I think so if you've got somebody like that we had similar in Bailey Hutch the year we were in that it's it's key if you've got a really good striker that can get on the end of the thing, like you're going to be high up the league so yeah credit to her and credit to Queen's Park for, for rebuilding and like you say attracting good SWPL one experience to their team and Rachel to talk about Gart Cairn, it's it's a real shame to see they were they were ninety minutes and away from being in the top flight, and obviously with them not winning that playoff, a lot of players moving on eh, off the back of that, and they're now kind of cut adrift. They're, they're seven points adrift at the at the bottom of the league at the turnaround. Um, but where do you think probably the same situation as Aki's? But where do you think they could kind of go from here? They're going to have to pick up points, but as we've already discussed. It is such a tight league and you do see big turnarounds every year in there, but is that something that Gart Cairn could take uh, take confidence in that they can do that at the, at the next round of fixtures? 
Yeah, I think it's probably just trying to get to the new year at this point for them. Um, I know they've just got a new coach that's just came in as well. So I think there's been a lot of change. Obviously, I've not played for a while now, but um, <clears throat> I remember playing against Gart Cairn over a, a two-year period and they were one of the most competitive teams in the league, really aggressive, really together as a unit and they were really hard to break down. But I think the recruitment that they've got at the moment is a lot of younger players. They don't have that balance that Lauren mentioned earlier. So I think for them, it's the new coach putting his stamp on things and hopefully <clears throat> they start getting results, hopefully from the new year. But if not, I think it's going to be a really long and tricky season for them. Um so yeah, they're just they're just not in a good place. So hopefully things can turn around for them. Uh, another game that took place in a team that seems to be on the up and getting some <laughs> consistency about them uh, was Burham Muir getting an away win, which they'll be really happy with to uh, against Glasgow Women. Um, they got they're the only team to to beat Queens Park the who that are playing in the same league this season it wasn't it was in the cup uh, mind you but they can take confidence from that I was speaking to their captain Iris uh, a couple of weeks ago and they were they were saying that that it shows that they can compete with the teams at the top of the league and I think they've had a change in management Rachel this season and Emwoods came in really experienced. Uh, coach and manager at, at that level and it seems to be falling into place for them. Yeah, I know Andy really well um, from my time at Hearts. Um, very well organised. Any team that he has knows exactly what he wants um, and they're always well structured so it doesn't surprise me that they're they're getting the results against some of the top sides in our league at the moment. A couple of standouts, Beth Rennie that used to be at Livingston about two or three seasons ago Young goalie, just trying to make her mark on things at the moment, going out on loan to Muir. I think she's she's helped them along the way. I know previously their goalkeeper situation hasn't always been the best. They've had quite a lot of loans. Um, so for me, I think she's somebody that's helping them on the way to some of these wins that they're they're getting at the moment. But yeah, it doesn't surprise me that they're starting to pick up big results in the league. And I think the longer that the season goes on, I think they'll establish themselves more and more um, and challenge the teams that are in the first three spots at the moment. And Dion, uh, the final game of the of the weekend was St Johnston's convincing win um, away to Stirling Uni, a 6-0 win. They were another team that started off slowly. From memory, they, they lost their opening two fixtures, uh, but they've, they've now started to pick up wins. Got um, Morgan Stedman up, up top, so they do have a, a goal scorer in there and she's been starting to, to pick up the goals as well. I think that's that's so important uh, when you're looking around the dressing room and you're thinking that person's going to get me goals today and then it's up to everyone else to, to chip in and, and do their bit, but really convincing win for them away to Stirling. Yeah, I think Jordan has, has been a massive impact for St. Johnson, to be honest with you. Um, like you say, they did start off quite rocky, but they just seem to be getting better and better, St. Johnson. So, um, like you say, you're just hitting the ground running. Um Behind, they're sitting behind Stirling, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it's really, point really, separates them. really tight in that league. Yep, yep. But no, they're, they're, they're doing really well. And they, if they keep that consistency, then they'll keep doing well. So uh, just to just to round off, off the league, Lauren, we've already spoken about it, how tight it is. Uh, I'm just looking at the league table just now. You've got Queen's Park and Kelly fighting it out. Uh, only a couple of points between them. Livy are kind of a wee bit on their own on 13 points, but then you've got four teams on, uh, you've got St Johnston and Glasgow Women on nine, you've got Borough Muir and Stirling Uni on eight, and you've kind of got Gart Cairn, as I said, uh, a little bit of drift at the moment, but uh, just a couple of wins and you can find yourself in in those top positions. Uh, I think it was Borough Muir were sitting second in the league last season with a couple of games to go and just missed out in the playoffs. So it shows how important every single game is. There's no gimmies in, in this league. No, definitely not. And I think, remember when we were in it, I think there's maybe five or six of this WPL1 teams that were in SPL2 with, with Aberdeen. So that's only two years ago and the transition of clubs going up. But yeah, it looks a bit similar to SWPL1. I think there's a two and maybe three, Rachel, if you get yourself in their base for, for that title, the way it started. Then you've got the middle section battling it out, and unfortunately, Gart Cairn have just drifted. But like you say, it's it's a long season. There's January transfer windows now as well for Gart Cairn to pick up. Glasgow women the same. I feel like they've gone down and maybe just struggled a wee bit after such a disappointing year last year. A few folk have moved on, but... 
yeah, exciting league. Um, as I say, thoroughly enjoyed playing in it. So yeah, so, uh, definitely a table will change a few times towards the for the end of the season. That's for sure. Oh, that's great. And just want to thank you all for joining us this evening. It's been great to to hear your opinions on the weekend's action. Thank you for having us. Thanks. No problem. No problem at all. And thanks, everyone, for joining us on SWPL, The Final Whistle.